except the only trouble is that Prophecy doesn't seem so much like a new summer movie as like an instant rerun of Alien, the science fiction thriller that's already the biggest hit of the summer. Now, if Prophecy took place in outer space, instead of in the forest of Maine, it'd be the same movie as Alien, basically, <laughs> because both movies star a slimy, gooey monster with sharp little teeth that jumps on people when they have their backs turned. The only new angle in Prophecy is that it gets into a controversy over ecology when a doctor from the Environmental Protection <laughs> Agency goes north to study some weird happenings in the woods. He gets a guided tour from the local Indians. Why are these logs in here? They come twice each year, then they disappear. What is that? So quick to meet you, eh? He says he will show you why he calls it the Garden of Eden. They should be underground. Here. I think we're still in it. It's a tadpole. I told you things grow big here. You've seen this before? No. No one has seen them. They're only in this part. What does this pond feed into? The Espy River. That's where the paper mill is. Aha, the old polluting paper mill trick. <laughs> it turns out that mercury from the paper plant has polluted the environment and created a race of slimy, gooey monsters who look like a cross between, sort of like a grizzly bear and Godzilla. <laughs> And the last half of the movie consists of a series of attacks by the monster, like this one, as the survivors barricade themselves inside a cabin. Great, huh? You know, how often, <laughs> how often have we seen that scene before? I think the last time was in Night of the Living Dead. Yeah. And remember the classic Bigfoot in which the monster looked like Godzilla wearing a dirty shag rug? Or <laughs> remember the classic Food of the Gods in which pollution created a race of chickens as big as Godzilla? <laughs> Prophecy is the same tired old stuff and the addition of topical issues like Indian rights, environmental protection, that doesn't change a thing. I think it was Gertrude Stein who once said, a Godzilla is a Godzilla is a Godzilla. Something like that. You know, the problem with this picture, it's schizoid. On one hand, it wants to be a serious picture, sort of like the China Syndrome, warning us about pollution and all that. On the other hand, it's got these sleazy monsters that you mentioned. It's a traditional horror picture. They should have gone one way or the other. Neither half that they created is particularly interesting. Yeah, that's the shocking thing. It's a big budget, important picture, and yet the monster doesn't even have the, uh, the ethical integrity of something you'd find imported from Japan. I mean, at one point, he's taller than a pine tree. He pushes aside whole forests. <laughs> the next point, he's shorter than they are. He can hardly wait across the river. There's no consistency, and so you can't even believe the threat. It's a lousy so, picture. On any other week, I think it would have been one of our dogs of the week. Easily, very easily, yes. Yeah. Our, Who knows to the laughable ecological thriller <laughs> prophecy 
the only film I've ever seen ever to cross an earthworm with a bear <laughs> and come up with a very silly monster. On the basis of that set of mostly negative opinions, I think we should have invited Spot to sit in uh, with us for the you entire show. You know, that show. happens a lot in the summer. There are a lot of lousy pictures in the summer. This summer seems like it's very uh, thick on the old dog days, though.